Arizona because God says, see my finger, the domino falls. Keep your eye upon Wisconsin and Michigan. I will crack them and smack them together. And I will cause the Liberty Bell to ring loud in Pennsylvania. And I will teach a lesson to the devil who thought he could go down to Georgia. And I'm going to show an interesting clue in New Hampshire. And I'm going to also unveil from the high place of Colorado. I'm going to bring it down and let you see something. So get ready. As these things begin to happen, says the living God. Are you not excited to be alive? People ask me why I smile so much. This is what you look like in heaven all the time. <laughs> People cannot stop smiling up there. It's amazing. And so uh, because they're excited, they're happy. But you know what they do know? They know what's going to happen here. They already know. And actually, God gives them glimpses of the future all the time while they're in heaven. And so many of your family members already know things God's going to do for you. They are so excited. And I tell people, the only reason they've ever come back here was to be a part of what you will be doing. Isn't that awesome? So I love meeting people, and I'm so glad everybody made it. Thank you, all those who are sitting out there on the floor. Or what is the other room you have? The cafe <laughs> and the chapel. Well, I have a message from my mother to you. She said, why are you making a nice youth room here at your sanctuary of 1,200 when you should be building a 10,000-seat sanctuary for your meeting? <laughs> When, when God says acceleration, he really means it. And when he says extravagant, he means extravagant. And in case you didn't know what we are now in a season of extravagance. He's going to set a table in the presence of our enemies. We, woo! <laughs> you need to have this picture. Like, here's all these enemies ready. You know, they're trying to steal from you and... And put sadness and control. And, and here's the God of everything giving the greatest banquet you've ever seen or attended. And we're all laughing together while, while hell is trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, because their plan is not working. So everybody look up for just a minute to heaven. And say, heaven, heaven. We, welcome we welcome you. Host of heaven. Host we welcome you. Our Father, we welcome you. Our King Jesus, we welcome you. And our best friend, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Woohoo! Woo! I'm very excited. <laughs> sit down, or I well, forget to tell you to sit down. Well, I know. Uh, this is my official first meeting here, but it's not the first meeting I've had since I arrived. I have one in the hotel lobby. I have one outside the hotel. I have one in the coffee shop, <laughs> in the elevator. <laughs> and I have a commission to take, be taken to heaven and reveal heaven to earth. But the other part of that is what the Father said. If they are there, that means anyone. If they are there in front of you, you will share. And so I can't help it if I'm around people, perfect strangers, sinners. It doesn't matter who it is because this pink hair is like a flag. <laughs> Isn't that fun and exciting? Go, why, why don't you ask them, ask her what she does, you know. They never expect my answer. <laughs> they never expect my answer. We well, you know I, I, I'm taking on tours of heaven and did you know you ride on rays of light and you step in these kiosks and it takes you to the other side of heaven. Did you know that you could ride on an Aragon? Do you know you can visit Michael's headquarters if you sneak over there? <laughs> 
The Father loves you. He sent you here for a reason. And they're just standing there like not knowing what to say. This hair right here, this is heaven culture. Would you like to have some? And I talk like they actually want to hear. No matter who they are. And most, most of the time, 99.9% of the time, they won't leave. And then they start asking me questions they never thought they'd be asking anybody. What does he look like? In other words, they're not saying he's not real. They aren't saying that. They're saying, what does he look like? What is heaven like? What's it like to stand in his presence? Do you feel like you're melting? Does he really know who we are? And I'm like, well, you came from him. He better know who you are. Did you know you used to be fire starters a long time ago? When you lived in him, you'd grab those flames of fire, those tongues of fire, and you'd stick them on your heads. This is for everybody here, too. You would stick them on your heads inside of him because these flames of glorious fire would come up around these stones of fire and make that rainbow shoot out of himself all over the throne room. And you loved, you were fascinated with the gemstones. That's why we like shiny stuff. We noticed, I see, I can see every bit of, that's on anybody out here, I can see it. And we would play on those gemstones. We would jump on them. And we'd grab those little tongues of fire and we'd wear them on our head like a little hat. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> so see, the first time in the book of Acts, that wasn't the first time. <laughs> and there's reasons why we do things, not even know why we do them. It's from when we lived in him. He really is your father. He really did carry you. We are really his offspring. And no matter what kind of child you ha had or even how your earthly father was, your real father is the same father Jesus has. <laughs> Amen? And did you know this? I love mysteries. I love mysteries when the father shares mysteries with me. And he said, well, you know, you talking to me, you know you've already been from the beginning to the end. You've already been there because you were in me. And everyone who was in me has already been there also. And you would get very excited when I'd go somewhere new, whether it was back to the, uh, into the future, well, it was back to the future, he goes there a lot, uh, to the past or the future. We saw it. We already saw that. We would jump on the rays of the rainbow coming from him. We would ride out and take peaks and see where he was and where he had, where he had gone. And so you already are a part of that. I think he's going to begin to uh, jog people's memories. And I will tell you why. Because in this season that we're entering through of extravagance, it's extravagance for many things that we'll see on the earth never seen before. But you yourself, in these days of extravagance, revelation, he will begin to take you back and show you when you sat in his hand. You would sit in his hand and you'd be captivated by the things he would say to you. Maybe you didn't know that you could see him. Anyone who's born again has a right to see him right now. When you die, that does, doesn't give you entrance into heaven then. It doesn't. You're born again. You're washed free of all your sins. Why would you not have entrance to heaven if he wants to give you a glimpse? I love the Father, how he'll do something or say something, then all of a sudden something happens. Well, why is he doing that? Like John, I'm sure was quite stunned. In the book of John, he said, no one can see the face of God and live. And yet, in the book of Revelations, he saw it. Did he see it? Remember when he's in the spirit on the Lord's day? That's a place, by the way. It's not something you think about. It's a place you go. And John was on the Isle of Patmos, and he would all the time go in that place, which is why he heard him. That's why he saw that door open, and he heard, come up. And that was the Father sitting on the throne. That wasn't the Lord. Only the Father has the rainbow coming in and out of him. And John in the book of Revelations clearly says he had a rainbow round about him like unto an emerald. And the lightnings and the thunderings that comes from him when he's sitting on the throne, that's his passion. 
A lightning bolt in heaven is a million megawatts of love. So guess what? Guess what Lucifer was kicked out of heaven with? <laughs> I'm sure he did not enjoy that. <laughs> so we were well acquainted with all of that. Before he even made this earth, we were in him. He has great plans for you. He has such a passion for you. You know you love your children. He loves you a million more times than that. Don't limit yourself. You have not because you ask not. There's so much more he wants to give us and do with us and how he wants to be with us. More and more people will, that will be brought back to their memories. And one person walked up to me about 10 years ago in a meeting. She said, I'm, I'm having these crazy dreams and I don't know what they mean. I said, well, what's the crazy dream? She said, I, I keep seeing myself sitting in this hand, and I'm, I'm like this, you know, laying like this, just staring. And all I can see is this great light. I'm looking at this great light, but I'm in this hand that I'm so filled with love when I sat there and watched him. So all I could see was light and fire. I said, you were remembering when you used to sit in the hand of the Father, and he would share some of the future he had for you. And she began to cry, and then she laughed. She was so excited. I've seen myself many times doing that myself, remembering in my mind, you know, that's part of your soul, right? Guess what? Your soul was always in him too. Your spirit and your soul cannot ever be separated. Your, your soul is a spiritual thing. You can't look inside yourself and see a soul. But you are a soul. That's why the Father keeps giving revelation about the soul. It's one of the most important parts of you. As a man thinking in his, in his heart, that word is soul. Your soul is at the heart and core of your being. It's what you think with. It's what you plan with. It's what you choose with. It's what you express with. He told Adam he became a living soul, didn't he? And most people read that. They don't even know what they're saying. One of the most important revelations you can get is to begin to understand that. Why didn't he say he was a living human being? Because he became a living soul. His soul was brought to life. Why was it that done? Because now he wasn't living inside the Father where you didn't have to make choices. You didn't have to choose where am I going to live, what am I going to do, what am I going to eat? Because he took care of all that. But now that Adam would live outside of him, he activated his soul so he could have a choice. He could think of things, invent things, create things. It display all of the range of emotions that he has put in your soul. He could fill the layers of his soul with God. The more Adam spent time with him, the more layers were filled with God. That's why it's important to make sure you make time for him. You spend all your time filling it full of television or hopefully not the fake news. <laughs> it fully explains what is wrong with people, though. If you feed on it, this is the way the Father explains it to me. What you enter into will enter into you. He makes things short. <laughs> but it's very profound, and it's true. Whatever you enter into or become a part of or go after will then consume your time, your thoughts, your energies. I changed my whole way of living. The more he would talk to me and share things with me, I wanted to be just like him. You know how parents get excited when their little kids look up, I'm going to be just like you one day. But the father would love for everyone to say that. Let's stand up and say it. Get up. <laughs> Get a picture of yourself standing before the throne of the Father, filled with his waves of love and consume with these flames of fire that are his eyes and waves of glory coming from him like shock waves and the passion he has for you and his throne is high and lifted up. There's different levels, levels and there's columns. It's almost like a structure. 
maybe 70 feet high, maybe, maybe higher. And here's the living creatures, that same height, staring at them as he sits on the throne and his son sits next to him. And they begin to shout, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And you're standing there and you begin to tremble from your feet up because the throne room trembles because of them worshiping him. And yet he will look down at you like you're eight years old. And some people have, have fear in them like, I don't know if I want to do that. I can't wait. It's like I get to see my daddy every time I'm caught up to heaven. I run up the steps. Nobody stops me. And I jump in his lap. And he'll hold me. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad I get to share with you and show you things to come. Because these are some of the most magnificent days I've ever created to be on the earth. Go tell them if they're alive now, it's because they're special. I chose them just especially to be here during these days. Because I saw their future. I knew it would be great. I knew I could trust them. I knew that I had handpicked and timed their birth on this earth. To see my hand move in ways never moved before. That nothing is too difficult for me. Nothing is impossible with me. Will you not believe? Will you not trust? There is no evil. So dark. So hateful. That it can stop the plans I have for planet earth. And for America. I know he loves this world, but I can tell you, he loves America. And he keeps telling me, I will not let any person steal it from me. It doesn't belong to hell. This is him speaking. It doesn't belong to the left. It doesn't belong to the liberals. It doesn't belong to the evil. No matter where they think they are, how high up there, how much money they got, how much power they got, they are like dust in my eyes. I think he means it. No matter in man's head what they think has happened or not happened or will never happen, they're a man. God doesn't lie. He doesn't waste his time. He creates it. He doesn't have to wait on somebody or something. He has a plan. And his timeline is the one that matters. Is that correct? Yes. It's too late to tell me it's not real. It won't work. And one day, every person will find out that he was right. And he will do exactly what he said he will do. He's doing us a favor. By revealing and exposing every level of evil and wickedness and corruption. Because justice is coming. We get to make our choices in this world. But it is a big mistake when you choose against the living God. This is a time for mercy, but more so than that, in this time, it is a time for justice. And we will have justice. There's been a scroll open, released from heaven, whose name is Justice who will speak loudly on behalf of what the Father wants, what his Son intends to do, what Holy Spirit is about to release in this earth. 
You can sit down. <laughs> My prayer would be every single person gets to go visit. I really sincerely would love for each and every one of you to go and be caught up to heaven. And not just heaven, but shown the future. The future belongs to us. Those who are in heaven have enjoyed their time down here. And they're still doing things in heaven. They're not laboring. But no one is sitting under a tree with fat baby angels dropping grapes in their mouth. <laughs> you can imagine that's almost been always the vision of people when someone says the word heaven. Boredom. How bored would you be if you were God and this is all you saw, people? Oh, yes, son. Yes, I worship you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Father. How long do you think he would want to do that? He would rather have you riding on the rainbows, swimming under the crystal sea, singing with the sharks and the fish, stepping through nothing into the observatory where you can see all of outer space, riding on a comet, choosing stars for a bouquet to take to his throne. There is no limit. To what he has made for us and what he will make with us. And he is very clear when he says that to me. What he has made for us and what he will make with us. He clearly said, let us make man in our image. That's what they look like. They have a body. All three of them have a body. Even if it's invisible. It's there. They have hands. They have legs. They have <laughs> They're not bizarre. They have a body. That's why you have a body. But the best part of that verse is this. Let us make men in our image and after our likeness. Their image and their likeness are two different things. Their likeness is how they operate. God is not repeating himself. That was one of the first things he told me. One of the first times he caught me up to heaven, he said, you need to understand of some of what the word I'm saying in the word. I am not repeating myself. But you need revelation. My heart is for those to be like us. Those who love me. Those who have received my son, they're supposed to be just like us because it says so in my word. That doesn't make us the God, but he is our father. We are his offspring. You are not some weak little person. Stop saying from Holy Spirit that you're an old sinner saved by grace. The father does not remember that you were a sinner. He does not remember your sins. So you're talking about nothing when you say it to him. How about I'm made in the image of the most high God. He desires that I become a creator and invent witty ideas. Make plans to do great things. I'm a soul doctor. I can share with people how they're sold to be free. I'm a commander. I can command the army of heaven because his son did. And his son said, what I did you will do and greater things you will do. Our weapons are mighty. They are not carnal. They are not physical. What do you think they are? They are spiritual, powerful weapons called the host of heaven. Who were designed and created for one thing, to destroy the works of the enemy. You cannot go up there and do it yourself. But we have the right to command the army of heaven. Christ himself stood before the Sanhedrin court and said these words which most people miss. 
when he stood there and said, if I wanted to, I could command the army of heaven to come and rescue me. Standing as a righteous man, say righteous man. Righteous man. He said those words. They hearken unto the word of the Lord because he was righteous. They hearken unto your words because you live righteous. We miss so much in our understanding who we are. You rule in this world. You are not the doormat. Satan is the doormat. He did so much more when he died, Christ. He had meetings with the Father for, well, if it was earth time, probably well over a year about what would happen when he would come down here as a child, be raised, and pay a price so he could bring us back home. Your home is heaven. It is not this world. This world is a shadow of what heaven is. That is where you're from. Your citizenship is in heaven. That's who you are. Most people in this world would not understand that. Most believers don't understand it. But that is going to change. Christ has a hope himself. People think he doesn't need anything. Couldn't, couldn't use anything else. You know, he's got it all. He can make it all. There is something he really passionately hopes for. That you will create, carry, and release the glory around this world. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That is not just a word. That is the very power of the living God multiplied. By the way you live your life, you begin to create glory. And every time I do, I give it back to him. But he won't take it away from me. He says, you will wear it and you will wear it and it will grow and it will glow. And one day I'll send you around the world and I say, release it. And when you... Do this and say, I release it like shock waves. It'll come out. It'll knock hell down. It'll knock down wicked, evil people. It'll pierce the heart of every person who's standing in front of you or in the city you are in. So the knowledge and knowing and understanding and operation of the glory will be seen and heard and known around this world. If you think you don't have a commission, you have one. If you're born again, you have one to create glory, to carry it and impart it. It will be devastating to the darkness in this world when the body of Christ stands up and finally begins to operate the way God always designed him to, that Christ paid a price for us to. That's why hell is trying to blind us, deceive us, and control us. It won't work. You are superheroes. And people say, yeah, Jesus is. Yes, that's why you are. That's why we like them. That's why Captain Zepto is here. (laughs) A superhero is someone is heroic because they have supernatural abilities and powers, and they love to use them to help others. That's a believer. That's what you are. You can imagine how all of heaven gets excited when they see somebody finally begin to understand and talk like and act like and live like they are. Finally, 
Christ is going to get some glory. And he's not going to hide it. As actually no one's going to be hidden in the years ahead. Get out of your closet this time. You run in your prayer closet. If you want to say hi to God, but you need to get out and be a superhero. I know some seniors. I don't include myself in that group. <laughs> Who've been around long enough, they really know God. If they have an issue, rise up. These are some missionaries. If, if something happens, they say it. They don't get in their little prayer huddle. Let's, okay, let's pray for three hours for this. The well has stopped working. And we may die if we don't get some water coming. And this little group that was visiting felt like it was their, uh, it was their job to, come on, let's get together and I'll huddle and pray. And she dropped their hands and turned away. She said, I'm done with all that right now. Okay, that was the past. This is the now. Uh, thank you, God. Fix it. And be fixed now. And by the time she got back to the cottage, the water was running out of the well everywhere. Because she didn't just talk being a believer. She lived it. She lived taking authority even over the elements. It isn't just flesh or what you think is or call living that we have authority over. We were given authority over this world. You will rule now with Christ now. Say now. now. In this lifetime. In this life. And in the time to come. Time. We, rule. we rule. We are kings, we are kings. And, priests. and priests. Levels of authority. Levels of authority. Help, us Help us use it. People should be chasing you down. <laughs> I heard you speak to that thing in your yard the other day. And it happened. And I was up all night long thinking, how did that happen? How could that? That couldn't happen. That, that could, they couldn't have made that up. I saw it happen with my eyes. What do you think signs and wonders are? Say signs. signs. Something, visible. Something visible. And wonders. And wonders. Something, felt. Something felt. And lived. All through his words, he talks about signs and wonders. Who did you think would be doing them? <laughs> Jesus is kind of on R and R right now. Ridiculous fun and recreation. Okay? If he died, he died, right? And he was dead, trust me. I've been taken into so many different times of things that happened in the Word. I, I was there. I saw what is not a vision, and I never dream. I have an encounter. In that time, it happened. He died. He really did die. He did descend into Abraham's bosom or paradise, whatever you want to call it. He preached the gospel to them. He was loving being with Joseph again. And all his friends, Abraham, Isaac, King David, who's a character, and still is. <clears throat> and he did something so miraculous, it even stunned the people in Abraham's bosom or paradise. I like paradise. It sounds better, right? If you saw it, you wouldn't call it just Abraham's bosom. I know that's the word in the, in the that's picture. You know why? That's where he was. When Abraham died, he didn't descend into hell, and he didn't go up into heaven. He went to paradise, which is in the earth, a spiritual abode with golden buildings, feast everywhere, music. It had a sky. It had a river. It had clouds. I think God can do that. And they lived like kings until the day. They knew that a Messiah would come. Well, there was a few people already down there telling all of them, well, he's already here on the earth, Joseph number one. Lazarus was there for a few days and had to leave. <laughs> Every
everyone in paradise was talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, was on the earth. They weren't in paradise going, oh my goodness, is he going to die? What's going to happen? <laughs> they were excited. And he shows up. Why? Because he told the thief, today I will be with you in paradise. People think he went ever, I don't know what they thought. He went go, Jesus didn't go shopping. He didn't go visit his mama. He didn't round up the army. You know, he's had it with all of them. Now, this is after he died in his spiritual body. Uh, people say he rounded up his army, went up and shoved them all back into hell. I, I know the Bible better than that. He had an assignment. Number one, to put on the best show ever in hell, he was a headliner. And the one who thought they were the headliner was the one who got bushwhacked. Lost everything he had, I hear. Doesn't have one more shiny orb on him anywhere. Because Jesus stripped all the gems off of him that the Father put on him when he made him. It says in the Bible he stripped him. Go read in the book of Colossians. See, I do know the Bible. He said, he spoiled. I love this show. Best show ever in hell, right? I think even, even the little demons were laughing at Satan because they didn't even like him. I, and they didn't like him anyway. <laughs> and, and they got shoved to the way back, right? They, were, they don't have a balcony, but they were shoved as far back in hell as you could get them because the principalities and powers were called in to see the show of the ages. Satan was going to torture the Son of God. Man. His brain got burnt when he got kicked out of heaven on that lightning bolt. <laughs> he keeps forgetting he lost. <laughs> Guess what right now? He forgot he lost. <laughs> Trust me, people were screaming and yelling in Abraham's bosom in paradise. Because where it is, they can see, the, they can see into the gates of hell. There's a, a great gulf, by the way. Go back to the miracle of the ages. When Christ was done preaching the gospel, visiting all of his friends, hugging on them, got to go. <laughs> Plan A's happen. You know, die on the cross, sins forgiven. So now I got to do the other part. It was finished for the sins, but, but he was not letting Satan keep his full of himself jewels the mighty keys and his wrong thinking that he was in charge. And so he knew he'd have to go over there. He just sat in hell not doing much of anything. Satan was afraid to touch him, thinking the father just might rescue him. Well, day one came, you know. Number one, the shocker even for hell was Christ walks up to the gates of hell by himself. Nobody went and got him. Nobody dragged him out of Abraham's bosom. He crossed over the impossible gulf that is between them because he had an appointment to um, make a show of it openly. So they took him, and they were trying to make plans. What do we do? What do we do? We don't want, we don't want, we don't want this burnt to a cinder. We'll be dust. So by the second day, Satan was pretty sure he was smarter than God. So he started to make his plan for his show. Invited all the principalities and powers off their thrones around the world in the second heaven. Come on in. This is going to be the greatest show ever. I'll give you front row seats. That pushed everybody else back. That's the way they were ticked off. <laughs> Little demons weren't going to get to see the show. <laughs> At least they weren't the show. Because <laughs> they were really sorry they were on the front row after a while on the third day. And so Satan gets already gets his regal garb on, shines his gemstones so they'll glow in hell's flames. Here's all his big guys waiting to see their master. And here's Christ in. They're still not saying anything. 
And then there's a crack of thunder. Everybody in hell begins to tremble because they didn't make that thunder. They remember that thunder. And Christ stands up and the glory begins to pour out of every part of his being. So almost blinding them with the light that was in him. Satan began to tremble. He dropped his plan to torture him. He didn't know what to do. And then Christ holds out his hands and begins to release the glory and the fire and begins to melt the faces of the hierarchy of hell. They melted like wax. The principalities and powers, their eye sockets, their faces distorted. When they said in Colossians, he spoiled. Spoiled, you can't fix it. They don't have hospitals in hell, people. <laughs> so they're screaming. These big guys are screaming. They're trying to run over. They can't have C. They're running over. there. The little guys are so happy they were on the front row. <laughs> they're running as far down those big dark tunnels in hell as far as they could get away from the other ones, but they were laughing. They don't care about each other at all. And then when Christ was done with that part, he turns over to their master, begins to beat him, strip him of everything he had on. And then before he was done, he began to pluck every gemstone, their settings. They're put in settings like a diamond. These gems the father put on a Lucifer when he created them. Go read Ezekiel 28. See any of the scripture? I get picked on a lot. That don't bother me. It's in me. It's life. People have it in here. He began to take every gemstone off of him. Everyone. He didn't leave a single one of them. And Satan was terrified. And then all of a sudden, he shoves him into the dirt and dust of hell and steps on him. But as he's stepping over him, Satan thinking he is done. He does one more thing. He reaches down as he passes over and takes the keys to hell, death, and the grave. In utter defeat, in agony, that is where our enemy was left. He should have no power over any of us. But we clearly have power over him. Christ does special things with those keys. It gives him the right to do things. Does anybody want to know? In the past, Satan would just kill whoever. You know, he just went around. You know, the scripture goes around. Uh, he, he, he goes about like a roaring lion, like one, because he doesn't have any teeth, okay? <laughs> Seeking whom he may. Did it say that it was the right thing to do? Did it say that that was okay for him to do that? Or did it say seeking whom he may devour? That's his plan. That's not God's plan. We, by Christ, we were given power over all the power of the enemy. Not some, not some of the time. How should tremble when you get up in the morning? That's why one day we'll have regions of light and regions of darkness in this world. There'll be a lot more regions of light than there will be darkness because Satan will have to have his own little cities to be evil in because there'll be so much glory in regions that sin and disease and sickness cannot or criminal activity cannot remain. So Christ takes those keys, exit, (laughs) <laughs> time to exit off the stage back up to the grave picks up his body which is now glorified neatly folds the cloth and just lays it there he's a neat person <laughs> <laughs> and
And the two angels, I am just crazy about those two angels. The two that remember when they came looking for him, they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Those two guys, those two angels. They had been with him for a long time. They knew Christ when he was called the word. They were some of Gabriel's. And they became good friends. So when the father picked two angels from heaven to bring that cup to his son in the garden that he had to drink, and that, and that cup is what had to be nailed to the cross. So people, when they say, how come he's the only one that can forgive sins? He's the only one that drank that cup. It wasn't just about putting his flesh on that cross. It's put every evil, wicked, defiling, dark thing that could ever operate or be on the earth in any way whatsoever was in that cup. And he had to be willing to drink it. Here's the Lord of glory, sinless, operating in power, even as a righteous man, loved his father beyond measure, obedient and willing. But he, even he had to choose. Am I going to be able to do this or not? And he says those words in the Bible. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want evil in himself. It didn't make him evil. He didn't want that in his soul. He didn't want it to be a part of it. He fought against it, crushed it the whole time he was on the earth. And he knew, he knew the purpose when he came. He knew we'd have to choose to either rescue us or just not take the cup and go home. But his next words, I love. But not my will be done. Your will be done, not mine. And he drank that cup. And in that garden, he died then. That gave him the right to tear up hell, melt the faces of the hierarchy of hell, strip Satan of all his authority and dominion he thought he had in the earth when God did not ever give him the earth. And some people act like, you know, God's just going to turn over America because, oh, my goodness, it's so wicked and evil. And nobody has any power to do anything about it. Yes, we do. We do. Because we rule. What you think and say every day matters. Because you're filling your layers. And you will begin to believe and not just believe what's in there. And you're repeating it yourself. Don't let anything in there. Why do you think he says guard it? Why did he say guard it? That meant things could get in there. But he said you guard it. You keep it out. You don't listen to it. You don't let people say it. You don't say the wickedness. The doom and gloom. That does not mean you are ignorant. That means you are innocent. Yes, the Father wants us to stand up and start saying something about it. Because your words have power. As a man thinketh in his heart or his soul, that is what he is. So the more stuff you say against what God said he was going to do, the more you will believe what you're thinking and what you're saying. People need to change what they're thinking and saying. You have to believe. When Jesus said, when I come back, he didn't say, well, I find wealth on the earth, joy on the earth. Well, I find, you know, creativity on the earth. He said, well, I find faith. Well, I find faith. Why? Because at one point, it'll be so grand and great and amazing and wonderful on this earth, and evil will be crushed back in so many places, people might forget to have faith. So I wrote in my Bible when I was young, don't ever let me get to a place where I don't need you. I would rather not be here. And I was serious. But we haven't even seen the great heights of faith that will be used by believers in this earth, passed down to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. generation. I could keep going on. It will grow, be more powerful, be more evident. 
This is the beginning of something great. It is not the end. And there's no way it could be the end. Because he lets me say it now. There's only one who knows when the end is. And it's all over and ready to be wrapped up. And it isn't any of us. <laughs> it isn't hell. It's not even the prophets. It's not even Jesus. It is the Father. And there's one reason why it is the Father that knows when that will happen. He made this earth, this physical realm, so we could be born from him, have a body, choose his son and come back to him and live throughout all of eternity. The most fabulous, amazing, stunning, awesome things that we'll get to do. We choose that. But he needs this physical realm to still be here. It has to still be here for one reason. He has not sent the last one. When he sends the last spirit of life, little being, where you were, where we all were, until he sends the last one and he gets born to the womb of a woman and has that little body, he will need this earth. And when that happens... He'll start to end it. But nobody will say when that will happen. And he's the only one he'll know who will know because it's coming from him. So until that time, we should get greater, bolder, more excited, celebrate more in our lives and show him that we believe he is. And when they are done, it'll be real simple to wrap it all up. Oh, no, I have to hang on to this earth. It must be here forever. That is not what the word says. It's going to be okay, people. <laughs> he will hold your hand while it's all gone away and makes it all new because right now this is our par partial home while we're here. His house, his world, his place is heaven. The new earth will be our home. Not just his, not just ours. And he'll get on the city and ride down on the new earth and be here. We'll be forever and ever and all time. We'll visit planets, create planets with him. Things on there.
You have passed the entrance office. Drive safely.